Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to graph transformations of the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant functions. So here, we're going to start with the uh, tangent function. So we have five key pieces of information. We have uh, this vertical asymptote, this point, negative pi over 4, negative 1, 0, 0, pi over 4, 1, and this other vertical asymptote, x equals pi over 2. So basically, we just have to figure out how to get one um, cycle of the tangent function because then it just keeps keeps repeating over and over and over again. All right, I think that the easiest way to graph tangent and cotangent functions is to just use good old-fashioned transformations. And if we always factor out the coefficient in front of the x, then we can always do the horizontal shrink or stretch first. So let's factor out this too. Okay, so just repeat what I said. If we have the coefficient of x factored out, we can always do the horizontal shrink or stretch first. Okay, so it takes some of the guesswork out of deciding what comes first. All right, so let's write down the transformations, uh, the order of the transformations we should use. So we're going to start with our horizontal shrink by a factor of 2. I'm sorry, horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. Okay, next, because we have minus pi over 4, we're going to shift pi over 4 units to the right. Okay, now we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And finally, we shift up 1 unit. Okay, now we're ready to transform those five key pieces of information. So we start with the vertical asymptote, x equals negative pi over 2. So we do a horizontal shrink by 1 half. So we take this and we multiply it by 1 half, because remember, horizontal transformations affect vertical lines. So we can ignore these two, ignore these two for the vertical asymptotes. These two we have to use for the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so a horizontal shrink by 1 half, we multiply this by 1 half, and it goes to x equals negative pi over 4. Then we shift pi over 4 right. So that means we add pi over 4 to this. So that's going to take us to x equals 0. Okay, and we can ignore these for horizontal, uh, sorry, for vertical asymptotes. We can ignore the vertical transformations. Okay, let's just do our next vertical asymptote, x equals pi over 2. So we do a horizontal shrink by 1 half. So we multiply this by 1 half, and that goes to x equals pi over 4. And then we do a shift pi over 4 right. So if we add pi over 4 to pi over 4, that's going to get us to pi over 2. Okay, and again, we can ignore vertical transformations for vertical asymptotes. All right, now go to the point negative pi over 4, negative 1. If we do a horizontal shrink by a half, it's going to go to, we multiply the x-coordinate by a half. So it goes to negative pi over 8, negative 1. Then we're going to shift pi over 4 right, so we add pi over 4 to negative pi over 8. So that's negative pi over 8 plus 2 pi over 8, and that's pi over 8. Then we do a vertical stretch by 2, so we multiply the y value by 2. And shift up 1 unit. Alright, why don't you press pause while you work on the remaining two points. So they are 0, 0 and pi over 4, 1. So for the point 0, 0, you should have gotten that it goes to the point pi over 4, comma 1. And for the point pi over 4, comma 1, you should have gotten 3 pi over 8, comma 3. All right, now we're ready to plot one cycle of the tangent graph. In particular, this tangent function. 
So we have our vertical asymptotes at x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. And then we need to plot these points, pi over 8, negative 1, pi over 4, 1, and 3 pi over 8, 3. Okay, you'll see I had to extend my graph because of this 3 pi over 8, comma 3. So these are the 3k points, and we just need to stretch our tangent graph to go through those. Okay, that's one cycle. It's a little hard to draw on this computer, so um, it's not a very nice sketch, but think about it as a stretched out one of these guys. All right, let's get one more cycle. Um, to get one more cycle, basically let's just take a look at the period. So let me erase all this stuff. Okay, the period of the transformed tangent function is going to be equal to pi divided by the absolute value of the number in front of the x. So that's pi divided by the absolute value of 2, so that's equal to pi over 2. So to get, the, to get another cycle, we're just going to repeat this. So we take this vertical asymptote. The next vertical asymptote is going to happen the length of the period away from this. So pi over 2 and then plus a pi over 2, pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that gets us to pi. So the next vertical asymptote is going to happen at pi. And it's basically all of this stuff repeated. So this guy here, halfway, it's going to be right there. Then 3 quarters of the way, it's going to be up here at 3. 1 quarter of the way from that vertical asymptote, it's going to be at negative 1. And so we get this kind of second cycle. These really should look the same. I graphed it quickly and crudely, so they don't. But note that these are just, it just keeps going on and on and on and repeats, repeats, repeats. Okay, the graph of the cotangent function and its transformations are quite similar. It's just that um, one representative cycle, uh, the cycle nearest the origin for the cotangent, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and at x equals pi. And it starts going, it's, so it comes from infinity, then falls, 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 go to, goes down to negative infinity. Okay, so it starts high and goes low. So it passes to the point pi over 4, 1, pi over 2, 0, and 3 pi over 4, negative 1. Okay, so like I said, you can graph it the exact same way. We just do transformations, factor out the number in front of the x, and then you get to do your horizontal shrink or stretch first. And then you just transform these five key pieces of information. Okay, so I'm not going to do an example here because it's already kind of a long video. Um, but that's the way, the, it's these key points that you, that you take care of. Okay, to get the graph of y equals secant of x, we're going to use the fact that it is the reciprocal of cosine of x. So we're going to start by graphing y equals cosine of x. All right, so here's the graph of one cycle of y equals cosine of x. I'm going to erase it after I draw the graph of y equals secant of x. I'm basically just drawing it right now because it's a good guide. Okay, so wherever cosine is 0, that's where the secant has a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, then to finish off the graph of secant, we're going to go to this peak here, and that's going to give us a point on the secant graph because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. And then the secant function goes up towards the vertical asymptote. Then here, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So we have that point. And the secant graph is going to go toward that vertical asymptote and toward that vertical asymptote. And again, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So the secant goes up like that. And then we just repeat. Okay, it's going to go up like that. And then if we were to continue the cosine graph, so we would see that we have another zero, so we have another vertical asymptote. And so the secant graph would go up like that. Okay, so the cosine graph is a really good guide for getting the graph of the secant function. And so now I'm going to erase the cosine because I just use it as an aid. Okay, so this right here is, so from this panel to this panel, that represents one cycle. So a full 
down up to another up down is one cycle so this is since I have another down up that would be this right here would be 1.5 cycles all right so the way we get the secant graphs is we start by graphing the partner to it um, as far as graphing goes which is the cosine function all right so let's see an example Okay, to get the graph of y equals 2 secant of 1 half x minus 1, I'm going to start by graphing y equals 2 cosine of 1 half x minus 1. Okay, so why don't you press pause while you work on graphing y equals 2 cosine of 1 half x minus 1. Okay, this one you should already know how to do, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Okay, here's one cycle of the graph of y equals 2 cosine of 1 half x minus 1. So to get the graph of the secant, 2 secant of 1 half x minus 1, we're going to start by plotting the vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes of the secant are going to be where the cosine crosses the midline. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at pi. And at 3 pi. Okay, so again... The vertical asymptotes of the secant are where the cosine graph crosses the midline. And again, the midline is y equals this number here. Okay, so next to get the secant graph, we go to the maxima of cosine and go up towards the vertical asymptotes. And to get the the rest of the secant graph, we go to the minima, and we go down toward the vertical asymptotes. Okay, and the secant graph just repeats. Okay, you get the period of the secant graph is the same thing as the period of the cosine graph. So it's 2 pi over the absolute value of 1 half, which is 1 half, so that's going to be 4 pi. Okay, so if this is just one cycle right here. To get more, we would just go out another length of the period, so another 4 pi, and just repeat all of this. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the cosine graph. Okay, as a final example, I will do a cosecant function. And basically, we get them the same exact, um, same exact way, except, except we're using the sine graph as our guide. Okay, to get the graph of y equals negative cosecant of 2x plus 4, I'm going to start by graphing y equals negative sine of 2x plus 4. Okay, again, you should already know how to do this one, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm just going to graph it for you. Okay, because it's negative sine, we know once we start at the midline, we're going to go down and then up. All right, to get the vertical asymptotes of the cosecant function, we're going to Again, they, they go where the sine graph crosses the midline. So there's one spot where the sine graph crosses the midline. There's another spot. And there's another spot. And to finish off the graph, at the maxima of the sine graph, we go up. So I'm going to erase this. We go, let me start over on that. We go up toward the vertical asymptote. So that's our point. We go up toward the vertical asymptote. Again, that's because the cosecant has a reciprocal of the sine function. And then for this guy right here, we go down toward the vertical asymptotes. So right here, this is one cycle of this cosecant function. To get another cycle, we would just go another length of the period, which is pi, and just repeat all of this. All right, so now let me finally just get rid of the uh, sine function because it was just a guide. All right, so here we have our cosecant graph. And it's it works the same way if you have uh, phase shifts as well. You just graph the original sine function and you put your vertical asymptotes where the graph crosses the midline and... You know, you use your maxima to get that part and your minima to get that part.